Wonder Woman 772, Becky oh. Clunan, Michael Conrad, uh, with Travis Moore. Uh, so, I'm not reading this anymore, so Matt, you're no. flying solo for this. Here we go, and I'll try to make it quick, because uh, I could talk about Vikings all day. Oh, you know? I know. Um, but it, it starts with Wonder Woman in the belly of Needhog, the, you know, the, the serpent that lives at the bottom of Yggdrasil. And uh, basically, she she thinks that she's just going to fight her way out of this beast's stomach. But uh, the basically, the contents of the stomach start to poison her, and she dies again. Uh, and then she, you know, sees the, the person holding the stuff up, and it goes back to the black and white, and the person's like, you know, you know, I wasn't supposed to interfere, but you're, you keep messing up, so here's the key. And they give her the key. So she, you know, gets up, fights her way out, Nidhogg throws her up. She gets the key and, and takes off with uh, Mattis talk. Um, Siegfried shows up and tells her that basically you don't want to mess with the Valkyries. Like this is this is bad news. Um, and Odin confronts Thor and find out that the weapons that they're using, the reason the Valkyries aren't being able to take the souls back is that the weapons that are being made by the dwarves are cursed. And that Odin gets mad at Thor, that Thor should have been able to put this together if he was paying attention. All very much, I felt like, Marvel Thor here. Um, that, you know, Odin's lambasting him for being himself, and if he was paying attention, none of this would have happened. Um, but something uh, kills Odin, right, as he's starting to put you know, everything together. Um, Wonder Woman joins with Thor and realizes like she can tap into her powers now so she starts to fly um and they they end up fighting this um it's like sea god this norse sea god and it reminds her of arthur and she's like i know this name it's very familiar but i don't know why so you get the point that her memories are coming back and as she's getting lost in this like i remember arthur because he smelled like a tide pool and it wasn't a good thing she gets cra crunched by this giant crab. And you come to find out that this person that keeps reviving her is dead man. Um, and that, you know, he was there basically to keep an eye on her because she's going through, through these different realms of the dead. Um, and that she is basically getting caught up on the side quest and she wasn't supposed to. And that, you know, she says that she has to save Yggdrasil but Deadman's like, you know, Yggdrasil's an elder that's lived longer than most. If she dies, it's because the Parliament of Trees has deemed it so. So it's starting to tie this mythological realm more into the DC, you know, magic stuff that we're more familiar with. Um, in that uh, she ends up, you know, going on this, this mission still because she made a promise to Siegfried, which is all very Diana. Like, this is who she is as a person. So they go to this um, Merc. What's the name of it? Oh, man. They go to this other realm, which is kind of like a realm between realms, where she ends up fighting like this evil, corrupted version of herself. Come to find out it's Dr. Psycho, and that she's using the cursed weapons to make Draugr, which are essentially um, Viking zombies. And that uh, that's the whole point of the cursed weapons and why the Valkyries can't um, save them. And that, you know, he's foiled, she's foiled him. Um, but she knows that if he's trying to stop her, she's getting closer to to figuring this all out. So so they keep it's called Merkvin, by the way, uh, this realm kind of in between. Um, and they, they get to a boat and it's Odin and they bring in. You know, the mythology that he's the wanderer, he's, you know, he has a whole bunch of different names and that he can take her to the, you know, to the fortress of the Valkyries, which is where she needs to go. But, you know, they're they're not going to want you there because no one except for the dead can see, you know, the Valkyries. And you're kind of in between. You're neither, you know, the gods or the dead. So they're not going to like your presence. So it ends like... Uh, him rowing up as the ferryman to Fortress Valkyrie. Uh, and it's like this big crystal cathedral up in the sky. It's very Kryptonian looking. Um, and he says, you know, 
Woe betide those who lay the mortal gaze upon the Valkyrie, except for you. And he goes, uh, you know, I don't, you know, that's just a line I say. Um, you know, so there's a bit of humor there, and it's to be continued. Um, the art's still so good. You get the, you know, the action is, is there. You get Diana teaming up with, with not only Thor, but Dead Man. I thought that was a nice reveal. The Dead Man's the one that's been, you know, helping her fairy back because it makes sense as he's portraying realms himself. And now it seems like she's going through these different afterlifes on a mission. And we'll get to see what that mission is. Um, but yeah, it's it's still a really entertaining read. It's the first thing I read this week. I was very excited for it. Uh, and again, to see Dead Man show up and, you know, I, now that's playing with the, how, you know, how he's been bringing her back and playing with the, the Norse afterlife of, of Valhalla. Um, it's, it's all real good. I didn't read the backup, so I'm going to just read the whole book. I'm going to give this an eight. <laughs> 